so I'm a big believer that if a crate exists for something, it probably exists for a reason, right? Many people probably use it. And I don't want to maintain things that other people are going to maintain if I can avoid it. So um, the way this was born was when, when I first started to use the two crates for sentiment and uh, ticket classification, I quickly ran into the fact that our people in dispatch would, the very first thing they would do, they would move a ticket from one board to another, which kind of defeats part of the purpose of this. And this is about to go through some uh, improvements here, which is kind of why it's top of mind. Um, and so what I did was the opposite of a workflow completion listener, right? I said, I need to change what triggers those two workflows because the very first thing dispatch does or somebody does is probably move the ticket to another board. So there's two things that in our world um, drive that initial move. Are you fully managed or are you more of a break fix kind of customer? And that splits the ticket into two almost identical boards with just some, there are some differences. So um, what I did was I turned off the triggers from these two crates and I started out with an, a new ticket received or added trigger uh, that is not very different than what the standard triggers would do. But the one thing that I didn't realize was that not every crate can be treated like a sub workflow. So I got down the beginning of this road. I went back to the rock. The rock helped fix these two crates so that they can be sub workflows. So that that is important um, because what I'm doing is I'm I'm grabbing the trigger and I'm reusing the original ConnectWise um, callback trigger to trigger the crates so that they behave the way they intended to behave. Um, that might sound a little confusing. And if anybody wants to understand that a little better, I'll go into it a little deeper. But um, essentially, um, I grab the trigger and I save it. Um, and um, there's not much to that, but I gr grab um, one of the ticket details or the most important ticket detail uh, that, that I'm looking for at this point is the company ID, but I grab a few more things about the uh, about the ticket. And I also look at what board it started on um, because um, there's some things that could happen related to merging or if the workflow is delayed in running, somebody might, might be hitting refresh in in the dispatch portal and there might be two tickets coming right back to back so they'll merge them and that would break the workflow so um, the first thing i do is check if it's uh, merged or if it's catch-all because if it's catch-all i can't really do anything with it if, the, if and the way a catch-all ticket occurs in connectwise if you all don't know is if the same contact is attached to more than one company it's a little messy so um so i just i don't bother trying to pre-process those um, um, if it's not catch all or merged, we're going to go get the company and we're going to look at the company in ConnectWise and we're just going to uh, look back and see if the company is uh, fully managed. Um, and the way we do that is we are looking for, you open the ginger burger, it's a little easier. Um, we're just looking to see if the text of fully managed is one of the company types. Um, and once we know that and they are fully managed, what we'll do is we will move the ticket to the appropriate board first and uh, otherwise we're just going to go get busy. Um, there was a nuance that I also didn't expect. The trigger comes with the board ID, so I had to like update the trigger body so that it knew which board to uh, to set up properly for the two crates. So um, I just basically um, with a little no op action. Uh, it's funny how a no op has action. Uh, I updated the uh, the the callback so that it would know uh, the. The, whatever the little bit of updated information we had, uh, particularly which board it's going to and or are going to live on. And then we go to the sentiment crate and we go to the classification crate. Um, this has 
they, they can both run simultaneously and 99% of the time that's fine. Every once in a while, OpenAI gets stupid and it thinks that I'm trying to bombard it if we have a little bit of ticket influx. So when this gets redesigned, I'm going to put these like one behind the other so that whatever little occurrence of that that occur that happens today is going to be minimized. Um, so uh, the crates just do what the crates naturally do. Those are fully synced crates. And my whole agenda was to not unsync the crate. So um, there's in, in the next design of this, when we're going to do a few more things at the point of, you know, checking uh, inbound, um, we're going to try to make it a little bit more of like an intelligent dispatcher before we go down this road. Um, the next thing we're going to do is subsequent when we're finished, we're going to put a completion listener to do additional things, but never disturb these crates so that we're going to take advantage of our pre-processing and we're going to let Roost do the heavy lifting on the post-processing because it's just going to listen for the completion of the sub workflows.